a lot of those guys are there to get on TV. You know, if you're you're second place, that means you're the best loser. You know, there's nothing glorified to getting your ass kicked. I don't care what anybody says. No matter if you fought tough or whatever, you still lost. You know, I want to win. I work harder than most people. I don't think there's anybody. When we get in this house, I don't think there's anybody gonna be in better shape than me once we get there. Okay, I'm James the Executioner Vic. This is UFFL MMA. I'm back. I just got picked up at the airport. Um, everything went good. I'm, you know, I won't know nothing for sure for a few weeks or maybe over a month or whatever. But I'm pretty sure I made the show. I mean, nothing's guaranteed, but I, I'm pretty, pretty confident. You know, the, the TV producers like me. I did real good on the grappling and the, the pad work and uh, the UFC matchmaker Joe Silva like me a lot so I'm, I'm pretty confident that I made it so I guess we'll see what happens uh, well the tryouts you know they, they, they were they were long all day and you had to go register at 8 in the morning and then they were done and uh, shit, I didn't even get to do the grappling round until after 7 o'clock and then from there I did admittedly did pads and then went to the interview so everything was done from about to about 10 o'clock at night then the next day we went to Randy Couture's gym and I got the uh, it was pretty cool there's some pretty good people there I got the sport Amir Sadala and uh, Mike Pyle, he was there. Uh, Randy Couture's son, Ryan, he was working the front desk, actually. And then it was crazy because on the way over here uh, today, this this is like not not a, this is not a made up story. I like hopefully in a couple years, I guess maybe maybe you, you'll realize this is. The, I sat in the plane. Guess who sits directly behind me? Dan Hardy. And I didn't, you know, he was cool. He was really cool, real real friendly to everybody, you know, uh, real respectful. He was he was a cool guy. You know, I told him I was trying for the show, and he told me, you know, good luck, and he's gonna be looking out for me, you know, seeing, seeing, seeing if we, you know, if he sees me on TV or whatever. Well, I started boxing at the beginning of 2007, so I really haven't been training that long, right at five years, and I, um, I had about 20 amateur boxing fights in about a year and a half. Also, I had surgery on my shoulder during that time. And then once I got healthy after my shoulder healed, I started doing jiu-jitsu and uh, Jeff Owens, he's a brown belt, uh, possibly maybe a black belt now under uh, Travis Luter. Moved to Fort Worth to train, you know, to have a better place to train and more people to train with. I moved and uh, took my wrist with Hills and I started training at Peak Performance with Paul Holm. He's uh, another black belt under Travis Luter. And then I met some good friends there, you know, I met some good people there and then uh, from there, uh, I took about five MMA fights in like three months, all in am uh, amateur fights, and I won them all but one. I got one marked once, and then I uh, I went and I broke I broke my hand my last amateur fight, and then I, I ended up uh, having to move. I moved back in with my old boxing coach there in Weatherford, and then from there, uh, New World Combat Muay Thai, and then uh, Tarrant County Boxing Gym, you know where I uh, I learned some real good techniques and real real high level technical stuff from Derwin Land. He's my main trainer right now. And then I learned a lot of good Muay Thai. I had two professional Muay Thai fights also uh, under Francisco Zambrano. And then I went to, uh, I started coming to Genesis and I've been here for right out a year now. And then, so now my main, my main two gyms basically. I turned pro uh, last June. I started pro for like eight months. I had four fights within like three months. I won all of them, 4-0, three first round finishes and one decision. And then I went to uh, try for Ultimate Fighter and, and here we are right now. I'm, I'm ready, I'm, uh, I've been training so hard. I'm in such good shape right now. Like, you know, I, I stay in shape year round. I, I don't have a season of fighting, I fight year round. If I'm healthy, I fight. And I haven't fought in a while and I'm, I'm just like antsy right now. I'm so ready to fight. I've been sparring four days a week grappling three to four days a week, uh, just everything, you know, practice six days a week, you know, sometimes four hours a day, well, my days off work, I practice twice a day, I've just been, I'm in such phenomenal physical shape right now, I gotta get the weight down a little bit, which won't be a problem, I'm right on schedule with that, besides that, I'm ready, I'm just ready to fight. You know, I had a very good basketball coach in high school that was real hard on us, 
you know, discipline. My, my dad, you know, my mom, my mom raised my mom raised six kids, and we was, you know, I'm the youngest of six kids, and we was dirt poor, and my mom always would would have just enough money to get us by. She was very smart in saving stuff, you know, and and she, you know, she, my mom, you know, she taught me, you know, right from, you know, my mom and dad both they taught me right from wrong. I think that's why I grew up right, you know, because I, I was raised, you know, I know I know the difference between right and wrong. I know what I should do and what I should do, and I know how to do it. I just try to set myself up with the least possible chance of failure where, you know, try to set myself up where I have the best chance to succeed. This is my house. We're about to come in and take a small tour. I'm getting ready to leave um, in a couple days for the Ultimate Fighter TV show. So come check it out, I guess. It's not very nice. It's kind of poor. Like most fighters are poor, so that's just part of it. Um, uh, but it's home. Here's our wing dog, Dudley. He's, um, uh, he's, I promise we feed him. He's skinny because he has an intestine problem. So that's why he's skinny like that. And we need to have surgery, but we don't have money for surgery because they want $2,000 to fix our dog. So he's just going to have to live with it for right now. Yeah. Hold on, let's put some food in the bowl, though, so, so people know we're feeding him. <laughs> you're not neglected. I swear to God, he's not neglected. You should sit here and say that, uh, you know, you're going to I'm the surgery. dad. I'm the dad, he's yeah. the mother. This is my roommate, Steven. He's the mom, yeah. and I'm the daddy, okay? Tyson, Tyson. As long as we have that on camera, then we're good to go. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, we got, um, uh, let's see, here's my roommate's room. I'm just gonna show you how, how this man lives, kind of messy. Um, I, hope he, I hope you don't get too mad about that, but that's kind of, yeah. Okay, here's my room. It is a little messy, like um, always. Um, uh, yeah, this is where I live, like a pig, like a slob, pretty much. I clean it like once every now and then. I, if I mean, it went, whether I win, lose, whatever, I probably come move right back here, live live here with him. Still, you know, it's like I said, this is he's the best roommate I've, had, I've ever had, you know. And it's it's just smarter. I'm single. I have no kids, you know, not married, nothing like that. So there's no reason for me to really move anywhere else. I mean, maybe if I was gonna go train at a big camp or something, I might I might go for three or four weeks somewhere to stay, you know, at some big camp. But for the most part, you know, I have really good training partners around here. This one dude quits the show because he's, he misses his girlfriend that he's been going out with for six months. So he, he leaves the show. And this was back when it was a six week season instead of a three week season. I mean, instead of three months, like we're gonna do this year. So this, this pussy quits the show because of a girlfriend, you know, that's just ridiculous. That means he's not a real fighter, he's a, he's a joke. And that's why you, out of all these guys, you'll have 16 guys every season, and you literally hear from like three of them that actually get in the UFC and do good for, per each season. You know, yeah, I mean, there's been a bunch of them over the years, but they've had 14 other seasons, you know. So basically you hear from three or four guys each season, and the rest of the guys you never hear from again. And, you know, I'm going to try to keep to myself, which will be hard, you know, because there's, you know, you got to talk to somebody. There's no TVs, no internet, no computers, no nothing. So you're going to be, you know, pretty much in there with 16 other guys. No girls. That's not going to be fun at all. Um, uh, as I got older, you know, I, I, I watched fighting, watched, you know, watched the UFCs. I remember the first, you know, the first ones I remember watching them. I used to use the rental from the movie store down the road from our house, and I watched all them. And, I just grew up fighting and, you know, I've always been in so many street fights, you know, because my dad taught me from a little age, you know, you don't put up a shit for nobody. And I've, so I've been in a lot of street fights. So I quit my, my good job I had working at this oil field company, making making pretty good money and getting a lot of overtime. So I made decent money. And then I uh, I went to work at Target so I could, for like seven freaking 25 an hour, so I could, I could practice more. And everyone's looking at me like I'm stupid. And my brothers tell me I'm a dumbass for quitting a good job. And everyone's telling me I'm an idiot, th thinking I'm just chasing some boyhood dream like an idiot or something. And then, you know, everything worked out. You know, me and me and Jared, I went back out there. Jared Kemp, he's the head coach of Weatherford Boxing Team. Me and him are, are really close, like best friends. He's like the father figure almost to me. And, you know, he'd do anything for me. And, you know, I'd do anything for him. And we're, you know, that we've just had that relationship for the last five years. You know, he sees me as a real fighter, you know, and I know he when he was fighting, you know, he was a real fighter and he, he respects me a lot because of that and I respect him for that. I, I don't know. I just, I mean, I, I feel really strong. I mean, here's the thing. People say I'm caught, you know, you don't hear me saying, oh, I'm badass at fucking volleyball or I'm badass at um, uh, 
baseball. I, I'm only talk about things I'm good at, and I'm good at. I'm only good at a few things, but the the few things I'm good at, I'm really good at them because I make sure that I'm good at them. I, I've never lost a fight. I've never lost anything in any sport competition because someone was in better shape than me. I've never lost because someone wanted to win more than me. And I've never lost because someone worked harder than me, and I would never lose for those reasons ever. Mom, you know, always told me I could do anything I wanted to in life, and I, I believe that I took it to heart. You know, I mean, and here I am. You know, my mom tells me I'm gonna win the show. You know, if you know, I, I believe that I can. You know, and that sounds a little cheesy. You know, everyone always, well, my mom told me I could do it. You know, well, I believe it. You know, my, I respect my mom more than anybody in the world, and you know, I, I, I was raised right. You know, I was raised poor, and I. I appreciate everything I got, you know, because I, I grew up poor, you know, that's why, you know, I didn't have a lot of material things in my life, you know, uh, simple things like cable TV, you know, I love cable TV now because I didn't have cable TV in my house till I was 17 years old, you know, and that's because me and my brother worked at a fireworks stand in the summer one year and we made enough money to get cable. And then from there, you know, me and we tried to help my mom and my mom tried to pay it, you know, and we didn't have cable until we was basically 17 years old. So I love uh, small shit like that. You know, that's why people, you know, people wonder why I dress all, you know, poor like or dress in Walmart because I have no desire to, to wear other shit. I don't care about material things. I care about leaving a legacy as a fighter, you know. Like, I mean, I kind of like Dominic Cruz. I'm kind of favorite because I've seen him on the inside MMA and uh, his assistant coach is going to be Phil Davis. You know, Phil Davis is a high level wrestler and Dominic Cruz and Phil Davis, they're both tall for the weight class. So their body types are more, you know, like Dominic Cruz, he's like five foot 10, 135 pound fighter. You know, that's, that's a big guy for that weight class. So his, the stuff that works for him will probably work for me. So. I'm thinking, you know, I, I have to win more tonight. I have to win. You know, I'm not, I'm not there to, to be on TV. I'm not there to be on one, one fucking episode. You know, I'm there to win. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I've never just been happy with fucking getting there. You know, it's, it's you know, it's, it's time to win, you know. And I'll put in the work. I'm thinking, you know, I, this guy has the same dream I got, but does he want it as bad as me? And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let you know. I just can't get caught up in some, some guy get me in a lucky submission or some guy hit me with a lucky punch. You know, I gotta stick to my game plan and, and you know, execute it. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think, um, uh, I mean, I, I think it, like. My parent, my mom, you know, I think I really want to make my parents proud. I think, you know, if I was to win this show, I think it would be, I mean, me getting on the show, I can tell that they're just super proud of me. And then, you know, all my gems, I think, you know, I'm hoping it helps my gems out. Honestly, you know, Genesis, Fade Links, I'm hoping it gets them, you know, I hope it gets some more students, you know, because, you know, they've helped me out a lot by, you know, hooking me up with, with free training and all that, you know, because they know, you know, fighters are poor. They know that, you know, and they've helped me out a lot. And I hope that, you know, maybe people will see that I train there and they'll go to their gym too and it'll get more business for them because, you know, they deserve that as well. And uh, I'm hoping, you know, it makes our gyms more popular and, Every, you know, maybe, you know, our coaches get more respect. Derwin Lamb and Tony Tempton and Albert Hughes and them, they're very good. Francisco's and Ron, they're very good coaches. Uh, they, they, they need to jump on the bandwagon now because it's leaving town, you know, is what they need to do because the this, this shit's going down. You know, I've worked hard to get here. Ain't nobody worked harder than me to get here. And, and ain't nobody has the will to win like me, you know. It ain't the uh it ain't the skill of the man, it's the will of the man is what they say. And, and you know, I, this, this will won't be broken. I promise you that. It will not be broken. Shine the camera on him chopping the carrots and shit, all right? And then he flashed my name and my Stephen number. Stephen DeWitt. And his number, yes. Culinary cook. All right, I'll, I'll give you some PR time. You ready, Stephen? Yes, sir. We're on, bro. Okay, okay. Here's the thing. My roommate, Stephen DeWitt, that's uh, with a capital D and a capital W, right? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, he is um, uh, a professional uh, cook of uh, Le Cordon Bleu Culinary Arts uh, School. And he's cooking for a professional golfer named Ben Crane right now. Yes, sir. Um, uh, and he is always looking for extra gigs. So if anybody uh, is looking for a good top-notch uh, chef, then uh, you should call him.